Hello and good morning, my creative friends. I'm Dr. Manette Briarden. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette, where we use the pages of our art journal and other substrates as a way of really connecting to ourselves. I believe that art is one of the most powerful tools for not just self-expression, but for personal growth and self-discovery as well. At this stage in my life, I've done a lot of the emotional growth work. There's always more to do, but I'm always still growing and learning. And so I think it's really important that we look for the ways that we can make personal growth fun because it doesn't always have to be, my hair sticking out like crazy, it doesn't always have to be deep and dark when you've done a lot of healing work and yet you're ready to just sort of keep going but in just a fresh direction maybe you're feeling stuck looking for purpose or meaning or just looking to sort of cultivate what is your favorite form of creative expression those are all topics that we explore good morning tori come on georgia all topics that we explore here on painting in your pjs live with minette and starting this past Monday, I made an affirmations journal. I'm going to be working in this journal all month long, so I'm kind of excited about it. And I'm going to switch my camera, and Georgia and I are going to dive right in and get started. Because you can see she's going to be super helpful, Miss Little Wiggle Worm. So here's the cover. It feels mostly finished. It feels like maybe it needs some touch-up, but that might happen at the end. Here was the spread that I created yesterday and finished up. I also added my self-portrait in here because this is my positive affirmations journal. And what feels important is to remember this smiley, happy version of myself. This is my backyard where we used to live in Goleta, California. I miss my gorgeous hibiscus plants. And one of the types of substrates that I'm using in this journal is some canvas like a canvas pad and it's interesting to work in. And so the affirmation I chose from today was one I spoke about yesterday and felt like another great one to just start the journey, right? To just start our creative affirmations journey. And it's, I am alive in this moment. I am alive in this moment. Yes, George, I see you. She's being very snuggly this morning. And I have had this image floating around my desk for a while, and I love this. This was a, she was wearing a long gown that I cut up and used for something else, but I just love the expression on her face. She definitely looks like she's alive and enjoying the moment. And I think what I love about this particular affirmation is when we acknowledge that we're alive, we get to start with just so much gratitude, right? Like there's you know, hard to um, continue to stay and maybe worry or concern about things. I'm just going to plop that down there when we just remember that we're alive. So good morning, Yvonne. So I had kind of a vision coming together of this page and what I want it to look like with maybe some blue and green, a little bit simple landscape, maybe a nice bright sun. going to try to keep this one pretty simple. All right, Georgia, off you go. She's making kitty biscuits on my pajamas. And um, so I always have an idea of where I want to start, and we'll see if that's where I actually end up as well. But I grabbed a box of oil pastels. These are some Faber-Castell ones. I even forgot that I had these, but I've been poking around, getting ready for my in-person retreat that starts tomorrow here in my studio. And these are pretty nice ones. I love putting oil pastel down, using it for my journal writing before I get started. So I'm going to come in, and I always like to write whatever that positive affirmation is. I want to write it on the page. And I might write it a couple of times, but I'm also feeling a lot of gratitude. So maybe I'm going to add here, and here, I am grateful. And I love starting my art journal spreads with my own handwriting. If you followed me for a while, you've seen me do this over and over. I'm grateful that I have nine amazing women coming to play in the studio with me. I am grateful to be alive. I'm also feeling a little bit of that nervous, excited anticipation. 
right? So just remembering I'm alive. I can remember that everything is working out perfectly. Another great one is every interaction I have today is valuable. Lots to do on the on the to-do list. And I am alive just feels like the place to start. So that is where I'm going to begin my journey today. And I'm just getting some of the color. And it's amazing how just allowing ourselves to put marks on the page. It's a somatic experience of we're, we're moving energy, right? We're moving energy. I don't care if I can read this. You know, none of this is going to show. I'm just sort of building up the layers on the page here. Just getting out anything I'm saying or thinking, really using this as a way to feel into the energy of being alive. I was sort of thinking about, you know, what are the shapes, symbols, and colors that feel like aliveness to me? And it's definitely the nature colors, those bright greens and yellows, maybe some blue. And there's a gorgeous sunny sky here this morning, but it's been really <laughs> rainy and stormy here lately, but maybe I want to get some of this blue in. I always love that I can sort of scratch back through things. And just having some fun, it just feels good, again, always with our positive affirmations. The way to get affirmations to work is not to write them over and over, but to truly embody the feeling. What does it feel in your body right now to be alive? Can you feel your heart beating? Is it beating normally? How does your tummy feel? Does your head feel full and busy? So just noticing what does it feel like to feel alive and to be in the gratitude of that aliveness. And then we want to just bring that energy of I am alive to the page. All right, I have a nice messy page here. I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper here. Put those out of the way. And I'm going to get some gesso down over the top of this. So it's interesting because this is actually the back side of that canvas paper. I showed this yesterday. Here's my wedge. I'll show that one more time. This is just an inexpensive artist loft canvas pad that I'm like, oh, that might be fun to try. And then I think I used it once and I had this pad of paper sitting around. And it's just kind of interesting texture. It's a pretty thin canvas. And so we're going to see what we can make happen with this canvas paper here. And I'm going to get some gesso down to cover up some of those marks. I love it when they show through, so I'm not going for 100% opacity. Already am starting with that palette that I wanted to begin the painting with. And I've got a chunk of paint left on here, so let me find some place to wipe that paint off of. Here's one. Everything becomes collage fodder, right? Everything becomes collage fodder. And just a reminder for my regulars who join me, I will not be here tomorrow because I will be setting up and preparing for my retreat and I have two girlfriends that are coming in tonight so I will miss you guys all tomorrow and I will be back on Monday morning. So I'm going to hit this with the dryer and then I'm going to start layering in some paint. And I'm not going to get that 100% dry because I want some of those colors um, to mix with the white a little bit. Thank you, Tori. Appreciate you so much. Super excited about the retreat for sure. So I'm going to come in with this. I'm kind of in love with this turquoise blue by Liquitex. And 
I'm going to keep using my catalyst wedge. It was maybe a little more blue than I wanted. And again, I'm thinking landscapey, so blues and greens and some kind of bright yellow sun. I don't, I don't even need that color to be solid on there, but that was a lot of blue. Maybe I even want to take some of that blue off. Add it to our page over here. Putting paint on, taking paint off, remembering everything is paint overable. I kind of feel like that's my mantra for life, not just for my art, that, you know, we're always, almost always allowed that opportunity to have a do-over on things, right? And that we can, no matter what is happening, recreate something new out of whatever has happened. Good morning, Marion. Great to see you. <clears throat> so I'm working with this affirmation today, I am alive in this moment and feeling deep gratitude, gorgeous sunny blue skies this morning, temps are still cool but it's there's a um, just that sense of like we're right on that edge of where I think we're going from straight from spring or straight from winter to summer with not a lot of in between. But that's okay, I'll take it. We went for a walk yesterday and it was gorgeous. And then we have afternoon thunderstorms, which is just always interesting. I'm thinking I want a little bit darker green. We drove to a town south of Denver, Parker, Colorado, where I taught a abstract emotional watercolor class last night. It was so much fun. Loved the palette that we worked with. And uh, we drove down there and it was beautiful and sunny all the way down. And then of course, by the time we got ready to head back home, there were huge thunderclouds and storms off to the east, kind of hovering over the airport. Right, crazy, crazy to watch. We got home fine, not even a few drops of rain. I think we missed it all, but uh, it's interesting how storms move in the mountains, in the plains, and talk about things that make you feel alive, right? Thunderstorms, lightning, all things that make me feel alive. All right, I'm loving this super messy page. I don't want to have a lot of detail in the background of the page, but because I have this pretty dramatic figure here and I'm looking at her I'm thinking I'm gonna want some clouds and some sunshine in the top up here so let me grab some white paint and I'm curious I'd love to hear from others what makes you feel most alive what makes you feel most alive <clears throat> my stepdad for most of his life when people would ask him, even when he was a young man, how are you doing today? And he did it a lot more as he got older. But he would always say, great, my name wasn't in the papers this morning, meaning his name wasn't in the obituaries that morning. And that was just kind of his way. Of course, you know, as a teenager, I thought it was totally morbid. But really, it was just his way of saying, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to, to be alive. He was quite the joker in the kidders, so he was always looking for a way to say just about anything as a joke. Kind of liking that white on there, so maybe I'm just going to play with some white here. Again, the energy of aliveness. What makes you feel alive? Writing, art making, walking, digging in your garden. Hugs from my kiddos and my husband. I got a sweet call from a girlfriend yesterday. All different things that just make me happy and grateful to be here every single day. All right, don't ask me what I'm doing. I don't really know. I can just tell you that I'm painting the energy of alive, loving where this is going, feeling like 
It's going to create some nice contrast to her, but maybe a little bit darker green mixed in here a little bit. So let's try maybe this green. And I'm going to clean off this brush. Get a smaller brush. And my studio is a wreck. And um, as I mentioned, I have two girlfriends that are coming. Nope, that's like too brown of a green, so that's not going to be it. Um, but now that it's there, let's get a little bit of that on there, and then we'll just come brighten that up a little bit. And the guest bedrooms are all set and ready, but my studio looks like a bomb went off as I'm in prep mode. So today is grocery shopping with my son who's doing all the food prep and um, studio cleanup day as I prepare for everyone to begin to arrive. Okay, what feels like is I need to get this nice and dry and come in with some brighter greens, but again, it feels like a beautiful landscape of I am alive. And I don't need to do too much work on here, right? Because she's going to cover up most of this. And you notice that I turn my journal lengthwise. Nobody says that you have to always work in your journal landscape, right? So here's the, the front of the journal. Some people even create whole journals built this way. But I really wanted to use this particular image. And in order to do that, she didn't really fit here I would have had to chop more of her off and I couldn't visualize the spread and what I wanted it to look like but as soon as I turned my journal vertically I'm like oh there it is right there it is so taking your time to really look at the size and shape of the page and turn your journal every which way All right, I want a brighter green in here. Maybe this nice limey green. Oops, I got my affirmation in the paint. Of course I did. So you guys are being quiet. I'd love to hear what makes you feel alive. What makes you feel alive? Are you still with me? Are you painting along with me this morning? Or what are you working on? You guys always have beautiful projects that you're working on. And I'm just cleaning the paint off this little affirmation because I wanted to use this on the page. And it's getting a little messy, but we'll make it work. Messy is the name of the game. Okay, a little bright green and a little bit of sunshine peeking through the clouds. And this one is going to be ready for some collage and good to go. So if you're catching me on the replay here welcome also if this is your first time welcome be sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified of when i go live most mondays to thursdays at 7 a.m mountain time i'm gonna pull some of that green up there teaching definitely is one of the things that makes me feel alive so it was super fun to get to go and teach watercolor to a group of ladies because I am certainly no watercolor expert but teach them how I like to have fun abstract play with watercolor and they kept asking me great questions that you know really made me think about how I hold my brush and it made me think about all those things you know as an artist that I do naturally that I don't think about 
sharing how I use them, but I'm present to that this morning about, you know, when I'm holding my brush flat this way, when I'm using the very tip or when I'm using the very edge of the brush. And so paying attention to how we hold a brush, holding it loose at the end, those are all ways, right, that we can change up how a page looks simply by using brush strokes and being present to how we hold the brush. Tori, I love that. Alive is family and art. And you're working on journals to sell. Beautiful. I love that. Mm, that sounds amazing. Happy, happy birthday, Marion. I did not know it was your birthday. Happy birthday. Meet a friend for a walk along the shore. Have lunch in Stonington. Beautiful Stonington. Happy birthday. Birthdays are important to celebrate, and celebrating with friends is beautiful. Okay, I'm going to get this nice and dry. Actually, I'm going to put the sun on there, and then I'm going to get it nice and dry so that I can put my collage image on there. Get my brush nice and dry so I'm not over soaking the page and also because yellow is pretty translucent I think that I'm going to get some white down on here first and then I will come back in over the top of that white with that yellow so that white will show because if I go in over the top of that blue with my translucent yellow it's going to look green and not really translate Grateful for that sun rising every single morning, even when it's cloudy and I can't see it, it's still there. There's something affirming about that, you know, the certainty that the sun is going to rise. Super quick, simple, kindergarten style sun. Nothing fancy here. I think sometimes we can get caught up in making, you know, really complicated art journal spreads with lots of layers. And sometimes what we need is just simple, right? Sometimes what we need is just that simple thing that's going to bring us back to center, help us feel more calm and grounded. All right. I love that. It feels very alive. And I love these painty pages. I can still see words and part of an image. This is going to make some cool collage fodder at some point for something else. I'm going to just blot some of that off. That'll help me get it dry faster. Got that green on there pretty thick. Oh, it's drying pretty fast. Nice. I got some fun rays on there, all kinds of fun things. Nothing is wasted. Ooh, and I got a cool look in my sun there where it pulled some of that color away. And I think I'm going to bring back a little bit of cloud here. So it looks like that sun is just sort of peeking out. This is not a good cloud brush. So I highly recommend dedicating a journal or a few pages in a journal to brush play, practicing your strokes, seeing how many different marks you can make with a brush. All right, that feels a little bit better, maybe even a little bit too much. I'll just go back and forth. What I didn't want was that sort of hard edge on the bottom. So I wanted this light to just maybe be a little bit softer, maybe spreading out across the sky. Okay, we're going to get this dry. We're going to add our figure. And I love it when a page comes together fast. 
That doesn't always happen, as you guys know. Sometimes I struggle and it takes a really long time to create a page and sometimes they come together quickly. Me too, Tori, loving this colors, thank you. And I'm loving working in themed journals. I've never really done that before, but since I started here, I, I tend to have kind of a bit of a theme and a direction. And uh, there's something about sticking with a theme for a while that actually is working for me in a way I hadn't thought about before. So I'm gonna glue her down on this side She's going to get, have to get folded, but I'm not going to glue her down here because I really kind of like her a little bit sticking up, maybe standing out from that background a little bit. I'm going to have to trim the corners of her dress, but that's okay. And I think I'm going to come in with some matte medium to get her down really well. Oops, and I went all the way up. Okay, well, we'll figure that out. I'm just going, going, going. So we're going to put the rest of that matte medium. Come back on the actual page. So maybe she is going to get stuck down since we got glue on her anyway. I'm just smoothing that out. So interestingly, the matte medium sometimes makes the color on my catalyst wedge come off. So she's getting some extra blue on her dress there, but that's okay. She's wearing, this was a hand painted dress that I saw one of the Stampington magazines that I love. And I'm also thinking that for each of these pages, like I loved this one yesterday, where it actually has the affirmation written on the, the page, that I want that affirmation in my handwriting somewhere on each of the pages. But I also want to make some little tabs. This one got kind of messy, so I might print this one out again, but I'll show the tab in just a second. And just using my own handwriting, keeping it pretty simple. And I think the more that we write, paint, and bring imagery to the things that we want more of in our lives, the more we feel them. And I think the, the trick to working with affirmations and using them effectively as a way to change our thinking, which is the intention behind using having an affirmations or a mantra practice is repetition creates new neural pathways in our brain. It helps to get rid of some of the negative thinking and replace that right, with new thoughts, new stories, and that takes repetition, and art speeds up the process. We can cut some of our healing time in half by adding the visual and working with imagery for a while. So what I'm thinking is that for these pages, let's see if I can just bring some of that black back here a little bit, and I'll be okay with it being just that little bit of messy. perfectly imperfect, that I'm going to put tabs on the pages with the affirmations. Nope, I'm going to print that one out again, so I'm not going to do that right now. 
So as the book gets finished, it's going to have tabs on the pages with the different affirmations, and I'll be able to flip through and see those affirmations. And I can vary. Some of them can be at the top. Some of them can be at the bottom. And I'm wondering, bear with me one second. I'm going to go see if I have another printed out version of that. I'm sure I do. All right, then I can get this tab put on there and this page will be finished. And this has words on the back of it too, so it's probably going to get painted over on the back or I might put some washi tape or some of the gaffer's tape on the back to cover up the partial words on the back. But by now you guys know that I love things that stick out of my journal. So pretty happy with that page. Feels bright and alive. I might even go over this a little bit with white and soften those letters just a little bit. And decide I kind of like having them maybe on this side over here. All right. So I think I'm going to use some of the paper tape on this one. So this paper tape is like self-adhesive tape. I love this uh, tape. All you have to do is get it wet and it's super sticky. Plus then you can paint over it. I think I'm going to stick it all the way on the back of this. It'll be interesting to see if it'll stick to the canvas paper. Who knows? Everything's an experiment. But if I stick it, then I can have the cover up those words on the back as well. So all we have to do is put a little water on there. This one's getting some painty water, which is fine. And did I put the water on the right side? I did not. Clearly, I have not had enough coffee yet this morning. But it's all good. All right, so this will be an interesting experiment to see if this is going to stick to the canvas. Not sure, but we're going to find out. And if not, I'm just going to come in and put a piece of that gaffer's tape right over the top. So I'll give it a little while to dry. It usually sticks pretty quickly right to the to paper, but it seems to be sticking to the canvas. And I'm going to trim some of these my little tiny scissors, extra pieces of tape. It's definitely a lot easier to trim when it's dry than when it's wet. And I may want a little bit more on there, but I love where that's going. And so I'm going to love having this tabbed journal with all the affirmations on here. So I'll be able to flip that open to see. So we have a good start to our affirmations journal a couple of days in. Super excited to see where this particular journey is going to take me. So thank you guys all for joining me. A little bit shorter video today. I will be back next Monday with a retreat update and another affirmation. And my intention for this particular project is to use affirmations that are related to personal growth and self-discovery and not just any positive affirmations but to actually have them have a purpose and intention and I needed just a place to start in a way in and so this one came organically yesterday which I love as I was painting through this page 
this one I was floating around on my desk yesterday and I knew I wanted to do it today and we'll see where we're gonna go next so thank you guys always for joining me so appreciate you being here live or catching the replay I'm Dr. Minette Riordan this is painting in your PJs live with Minette and I will see you guys all next Monday have a beautiful rest of your week thank you everybody